Hi, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. This is part two, a follow-up to a story we covered recently about a TSA official who was accused of exploiting a family member with dementia and that person was arrested at the Atlanta airport. Now, she wasn't just anybody that was arrested at the Atlanta airport. This is why the story took off. Maxine McManaman. She was the assistant federal security director of the TSA, a very high ranking position. And she was arrested at Hartfields Jackson International Airport in Atlanta on a warrant out of Florida. Now, this is actually the airport that she governs. So you could imagine how embarrassing it is. To be arrested on your job as a superior ranking person in front of all your subordinates right so people have been asking questions like where is she now what's going on with the case and um did they have to do her like that is another big uh thing that people were talking about so we're gonna get into all that where is she now did they have to do her like that so on and so forth. So rehash the story quickly. And it said from NBC that a high ranking official with the Transportation Security Administration was arrested on charges stemming from an alleged involvement in the exploitation of a family member with dementia. We later found out that family member was her mother, Maxine McManaman, the assistant federal security director of TSA was taken into custody by U.S. Customs and Border Protection after arriving at Atlanta Airport on December 28th. We also found out that she was coming back from Jamaica. She was fresh off of a flight from Jamaica. And we were also informed that she is of Jamaican nationality, right? She was arrested on a warrant that came out of Port St. Lucie, Florida on charges of forgery, a third degree felony, the Port St. Lucie Police Department said in their Facebook post, authorities began their investigation in April after police received a call from someone that was reporting elderly abuse, according to the incident report that was published. The report, which is heavily redacted, accused McManaman of preparing a fraudulent quit claim deed for the family home. The quit claim is a form that is used to transfer a claim on a property from one person to another person or from one party to another party. They said that it was prepared in Florida by McManaman on December 5th of 2022. And it listed herself and her father, Delroy Chambers Sr. as the guarantee according to the report now the quick claim paperwork would basically allow you to take away somebody's house if for instance like in this case it says somebody that was suffering with dementia we found out already that it was her mom and her mother was suffering with dementia and what she did basically according to the law is she signed over her mother's house to herself and her father now there were a lot of questions there. People were asking, well, how come the father is married to the mom, but the mom owns the house solely by herself? Why, why did she never put her husband on the house, on the deed, right? Which is the normal thing to do for a couple that's been married for years, an elderly couple, but she completely owns the house. And what they failed to bring out was, well, they were trying to get around it. The mom started suffering badly from dementia, but before she got bad, when her mind was good and okay, she went and did proper paperwork and she turned over her house, care of her property to her son. Her son is the one who has the paperwork to say, I get to say what happens to this house, not the sister and not the father, but the sister is accused of forging the brother's signature to take the house for herself and putting it in herself and her father's name. A whole lot of family mix up. So authorities said that the quit claim purposely did not include any JR or SR junior or senior. The senior was the father. 
the junior, obviously the son. But if I sign my name on a paper and I don't put a junior or a senior, it will leave everybody viewing the paper confused because they know that I am a junior to my father, but no one is able to tell was it the junior or the senior that's signing this paper because the name is the same, right? Only differentiated by JR or SR, junior or senior. According to Waga of Atlanta, WAGA, Matt Manaman's brother, Delroy Chambers Jr., he was granted power of attorney after their mother, the sole owner of the home, started getting ill. This is before she got as bad as she is now. So the police said that they determined that Chambers Jr. could not have signed that paperwork because he was not in Florida where the paperwork was signed. These kind of paperwork, you don't just go whip in a pencil in it or a pen and a signature on it. These have to be notarized. That means you have to be in front of an individual, a notary public who's going to stamp it, uh, verify your identity, all that other stuff. So when they grabbed her and her dad and she said to the law, my brother signed it. And he was like, no, I didn't. And she was like, yes, you did. The dad was like, yes, you did. How could you do this to your sister? He was like, I don't care. Y'all trying to take mom's house. I did not sign that paperwork. You guys tried to steal the house. That's what you did. The law said, well, there's no junior or senior here. So how do we know which one signed it? He said, oh, I got proof for you. At the day when that was being done, here is my proof. I was not even in the state of Florida. I was in Atlanta or Georgia. And based on that, it was proven that Matt Manahan, Matt Manaman, Maxine, and uh, her father, Delroy Chambers, were determined to both have falsified the quick claim deed. That was the story how it went down, right? So the incident report also accuses the older, the father, the senior, of failing to properly care for his ailing wife. There were stories that her medication was left at the pharmacy. Um, prescriptions not filled or filled but not picked up that kind of stuff you know he was arrested on December 20th of 2023 right before Christmas time but then he was let go for he was arrested for exploitation of an elderly or disabled adult he was also arrested for forgery and for simple neglect of an elder or disabled adult he has since bonded out of the St. Lucie County Jail He's 80 years old and he denies any abuse uh, that they're throwing these allegations his way. When they asked them, like, what's going on? He said, yo, it's a family thing. It's a family thing. Basically saying that it's the brother that's doing this to the sister and he can't understand why the brother is doing it to the sister. Matt Manaman is currently detained. For those of you who want to know the follow up to the story, Matt Manaman. Maxine McManaman, the senior official for TSA that was arrested at the airport, is currently detained at the Clayton County Jail in Georgia, awaiting extradition to St. Lucie County in Florida. And she has still been there since her arrest. Um, it's crazy because there, there's no bond on her. She, she, she didn't get to bond out as far as we know. And she is waiting to be extradited. The part about embarrassment and did they have to do her this way? First of all, people were taken aback when they saw her picture, right? And the, the mugshot picture looks completely different. Well, it looks really bad compared to uh, her regular other picture. And I see a lot of women making fun of her. Oh my God, makeup does wonders. Yeah, makeup does wonders. A lot of women look just the same like she does, you know? Especially if you're in distress, you're rubbing your eyes because you might have been crying, your mascara is all smothered, it looks like you got two black eyes, your makeup's not on. For those of you who have some gray hairs showing and you didn't get a chance to dye your hair or put a weave on your head or a, a wig on your head, now everybody sees you just like how you look when you wake up in the morning next to your husband. Ah! And he ain't supposed to be scared. So, you know, don't make any fun of the woman. That's just seeing her in another light, right? <laughs> right. So get past how she looks, even though I was taken aback by myself as to how different both pictures looked. 
But the main question here, though, is after she had given this company so many years, I think she has been there since like 1991 or something like that. After she had given these com this company so many years to step off of a plane from Jamaica and then be arrested by Border Patrol um, and immigration authorities, it would seem like, damn, am I a legal alien? Like, what did she do? Am I a flight risk? Uh, what was it? Honestly, they could have taken her to a back room. Because, you know, somebody said on the channel, man, SoFlo, listen. If this was a, you know, person of another persuasion, per se, and had worked her way up and been faithful to this company and had received, achieved that level of bossship, then they would have handled that differently. They could have walked up to her. They could have been like, ma'am, um, don't make any sudden moves. We have all intentions to arrest you, but let's not do it out here in the open follow us or we will lead you to the back you know the facility very well you're the boss here so let's go that way and i'm sure she would have complied and went and they could have like handcuffed her behind the scenes but could you imagine getting off and before you could even go claim your luggage they grab you up right there as you're waiting for your bag to come around on the carousel and there's a group of guys there slapping handcuffs on you, reading you your Miranda rights out loud. Everybody is wondering, oh my God, what is going on? I don't know, man. I think that was purposely designed to debase her. I think it was purposely designed to uh, disrespect her. It was purposely designed to put her in a position where others will look at her and be embarrassed for her kind of thing. Right. When they ask TSA, what's going on? What happened? Where is she? TSA said in their statement that they're aware of McManaman's arrest for a non work related charge and she is on leave pending further law enforcement actions. So they haven't fired her. They are aware of what is taking place and it does has nothing to do with work. But it's something going on outside of work, right? So they also said TSA told its employees, holds its employees to the highest professional and ethical standard and has no tolerance for misconduct on or off duty. Any employee who fails to meet our fundamental ethical standards is held accountable. This is what a person from TSA said in response to the media wanting to know what's going on with Maxine McManaman. Well, what that says in a nutshell is this. We're just going to put her on leave. We don't know if it's paid or unpaid leave. We're just going to put her on leave. She probably got some leave days and she's getting paid. So put her on leave. See what the law enforcement does or says. If she's found guilty, she'll be fired. That's point blank, period. And if she's not found guilty, she'll be able to come back to work. They'll brush it off like some big mistake, something happened, but let's put this behind us and move forward. She's been at this company for forever. So to lose your career that you've put so many years in, fired is different from being laid off or being asked to resign. When you're asked to resign, you end up with your pension. After all these years, see I'm talking about she's been there for decades. So let's think about that. She is invested. Is she going to be able to walk away with her little retirement fund, 401k intact, her um, pension, whatever else they got coming her way? Or is she going to be just cut loose and take a big loss? We'll see. But all that depends on what happens in this case right the father he's trying to get the brother to change the story and get his sister out of there and settle this behind the scenes the brother is not backing down um so obviously this is going to go forward and we'll stay put so we can bring you the update as to what happens to this if she's fired from tsa because she's found guilty in court and all that other stuff as of now she is still 
in the Clayton County Jail in Georgia awaiting her extradition to St. Lucie County to face these charges. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Do you think that they could have handled it differently instead of arresting her at the airport where she worked at soon as she got off her flight from Jamaica? I'll catch you on the next video. It's SoFlow TV. I'm out. Peace.